Hello and welcome to our series of videos covering the use of NEON to map indoor signal coverage with Anritsu Signal and Spectrum Analyzers. This is the second video in a series of five which take you through the process of setting up and using NEON to map and generate RF coverage reports. This video will show you how to use the NEON command PC application to prepare a building for signal mapping. Let's look at a detailed agenda. Before we jump into building creation, we'll provide an overview of the NEON command software interface. But to prepare a building for mapping, the first step is to outline the building you wish to map. The outline is used to indicate where measurements will be taken and which areas will be included in the reporting. If no building is present in the base maps, which can occur on new construction, users can create building outlines with coordinates instead. The next step is to place a floor plan inside the building you wish to map. In most cases, these floor plans will come from graphic files or could even be pictures of evacuation diagrams. Once a floor plan is placed, it is helpful to map special features of the plan like stairways, escalators, and elevators. These special features allow NEON to map those areas more effectively. It is also important to define critical areas. Critical areas are those areas deemed important for coverage purposes by the National Fire Protection Association. Critical areas require increased levels of coverage and testing. Refer to the NFPA documentation for additional information. Finally, we will talk about saving building plans and when to save during the building creation process. Okay, let's get started. Once you launch the NEON command application, you'll be asked to enter your email address and password to sign in. Go ahead and enter that now and click on the sign in button. All right, here we are in the NEON command application. Let's first review the interface. To start off with, the menus at the top left of the application can be used to access a variety of the features within NEON command. I'll mention or highlight right now the support menu, which is very useful to take you to the documentation if you have any questions about particular things within the NEON command application. Also, when you come into the application, you'll find that you will be placed at the location you were at prior. If you need to move locations, you can do that by zooming out and in. I'm just using the roller on the mouse to do that. You can also drag by simply holding down the left mouse key and dragging to a different location. If you need to move to a particular address, you can do that by clicking on the magnifying glass and entering the address here and you'll be taken to that particular location within the map. Also at the top right there are zoom out and zoom in buttons as well and you can view this in three dimensions which we'll use the 3D view later once we get a floor plan placed and in the building. All right so let's start by creating a new building and I'm simply going to right click or context click on my building and say create building. Now what you'll get is the building editor toolbox over here on the left and it'll bring up create building outline. That allows you to go into your building. I can hold down and drag to a location, zoom in if I want, or zoom out. And I begin to create the building by drawing a polygon that forms the building outline. That polygon determines where the floor plans actually go. So I'll start by clicking here. This particular building has an overhang. So the actual floor is inside of that overhang a little bit. Now once I place the first two points, I can now hold down the shift key and this will snap at particular angles, which makes it easier to do follow on angles for my building. So I'm going to hold down the shift and click in the new locations. And I can drag as I'm doing that as well to move to different points. All right, and so here is my polygon. Now, if you make a mistake and want to start over, you can back up one step, two steps, however far you need to go 
by using Edit Undo or Control Z. All right, so I'm done now. I'm going to go ahead and hit the OK button. But before I do, let me just mention the edit coordinates. If you're mapping a new building or creating a floor plan for a new building that isn't present in the satellite views yet, then you can simply put in the coordinates of those locations and you can edit them manually. So that's useful uh, if you've got an open field or something where a building is but is not showing on the satellite view. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to give my building a name. I'll just call this sample building. And this is a two floor building. So I'm going to say that there's two floors above grade. And of course you can have a basement as well below grade. And you can, you can um, label these or move these around if you want. I'm going to go ahead and just say there's two floors above grade and click OK. So now I have a building outline that can be used to host the floor plans that go into this building. So to add a floor plan over here on my building editor toolbox, there's a plus for a floor plan to add the floor plan. So I'm going to click that and I'll pick my floor, first floor floor plan and hit open. Now, it's important that when you do this, you're on the floor you're bringing the floor plan into. You notice over here, I'm on my first floor, and that's where I bring the floor plan into. Now, once the floor plan is in there, it just places it down in the middle. Um, and of course, that is not how it's oriented, so I need to change that. Now, you can do that a couple different ways. One way is to click on the Edit Floor Plan button here and move and size this and rotate this drawing, if you wish. And that's kind of a challenge to get it to the right size and in the right location. So I'm going to cancel that. And instead, I'm going to use the, the um, control point method for placing the floor plan. And to use that method, you can zoom in on a location on your building outline, place a control point, and do the same on your floor plan so it knows where that control point belongs on the floor plan. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. And I'll now zoom out and do another control point here. And I'll do the same thing on my floor plan. Same point. Once I've done, I hit OK, and the floor plan will be positioned inside of my building perfectly. Now I need to place the second floor, floor plan. Let me click on the second floor, add floor plan, and I'll pick the second floor floor plan. Now I'm going to use the same control point method to place the plan. and finish. So now I have both floor plans in my building. Let's take a quick look at these in three dimensions. So I'll click on my 3D button here. Here's my second floor and here's my first floor. And you can move and rotate if you wish. And let's go back to two-dimensional mode. All right, so now I want to place my stairways. Now I'll mention here that stairways behave a little bit differently depending on which type of stairway you're using. For example, a straight staircase, you'll place the top and bottom on different floor plans. However, if you're using a U-shaped staircase like we are, those will automatically go on to two floors. Now, when I pick the U-shaped staircase and I place it, I have a Select Floors button that will show up, and I can then select the floors that this staircase involves. 
I only have two floors, so I can go ahead and simply place my staircase where it needs to be, and it will automatically go on these two floors. A couple little tips when you're placing stairways. I need to rotate this, so I'm going to grab the rotation handle, but I'm going to move away from the stairway a little bit, and I can do very fine adjustments on the rotation to get it in the correct rotation. And then I'll go ahead and place my stairway using the two corners and then click OK. So there's a stair stairway one. Now I need to place the second stairway and it too is a U-shaped stairway. So I'll place it, rotate accurately my stairway and then adjust the corners. and adjust my rotation slightly. And okay, now I have one final stairway to do. And it is a third U-shaped stairway. All right, and then finally I need to place an elevator in my building, and that elevator's location is this square right here. So I'll select my elevator. Rotate it to the correct angle. And again, elevators can encompass a number of floors as well, and you can choose which floors the elevator serves. All right, now depending on your fire code um, in your local area, you may have to use a critical area uh, indicator to tell the software that you need additional testing done in a particular location, and this will depend on your local governing fire authority on what they require. In my case, I'm going to add the elevator and stairways as critical areas that are deemed more important and therefore um, need some additional testing. To do that, I'll click in the grid testing section here and I'll go ahead now and mark a polygon that indicates those critical areas, stairways and elevators. And I'll repeat that process for each of my stairways. All right, now our building is complete and we can do signal mapping on the building. I'm going to go ahead and save my building at this point. And let me just mention that our building is relatively simple. Um, so I'll go ahead and save it at this point. However, if I was doing a more complex building with a lot more detail, I would probably save various times along the way. Saving at various times also is useful if you're going to do some experimentation. You can save at a particular place. And then you can abandon all your changes. So if I make changes to this building when I'm editing it and I hit this discard, it's going to discard all the changes I've made since it was last saved. So that's useful uh, for doing experimentation. And it's useful to make sure that you save as you go in case something happens. <clears throat> One other thing I'll mention here, and I didn't in our building, because it's fairly straightforward and simple, I didn't utilize it, but you can mark areas um, and remove areas. So you can add additional areas on additional floors that didn't exist on other floors. You can remove areas inside the building, for example, if you have a courtyard. Um, so that's, that's an option as well. All right, well, that concludes our video on how to create a building and floor plan. 
Be sure to tune into the other videos to complete the full process of using NEON with Anritsu instruments to do your signal mapping. Thank you for watching.